Hello again. Today we will continue our series with Dr. Azda Makram. She is a pediatrician with a great expert in metabolic conditions and cardiology conditions as well. So Dr. Azda, firstly, I need to ask about your medical background. I work as a neonatologist, pediatrician, and I intensivist in pediatrics. And then I work as a diabetologist in pediatrics also. And recently I work as a cardiologist in pediatrics. I have a hospital management uh, also, uh, 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 and I like pediatrics as a whole. It's my interest and it's my career. And anything in pediatrics is interesting to me, especially diabetes and the cardiology and the intensive care. Yes, it's a great uh, medical background as we expected, so we are trust your uh, valuable insight as well. So Dr. Azza, today you will have a great and critical topic related to uh, pediatrician cardiology. Uh, so today you will have uh, navigating the complexity of atrial defects. So firstly, uh, I need to ask about, uh, can you classify the different types of uh, atrial defects in children? Atrial septal defect considers the most common congenital heart defect in pediatrics and in other types also. So it's a very important career because it's considered 10% of the pediatric uh, cardiology, uh, uh, congenital heart uh, disease uh, uh, in cardiology and they consider 30% of adult congenital heart disease. Uh, so when we uh, study uh, atrial septal defect, we study a very important topic because it covers the pediatric area and the adult area also. Because atrial septal defect usually skips skip the diagnosis in pediatric uh, period and uh, be discovered accidentally in the adult court with many, many, many complications. Uh, so, atrial septal defect study, we have to categorize the atrial septal defect because it ranges from uh, Patent foramen oval, which is considered subtype, to extreme uh, horrible form associated with other congenital anomalies. If we categorize the atrial septal defect, we can categorize it as a PFO, uh, atrial septal defect, secundum atrial septal defect, sinus venosus atrial septal defect, which we consider as the superior sinus venosus and inferior sinus venosus. We also have uh, uh, ostium primum uh, defect, which is associated with uh, canal defect. And there is a coronary sinus defect. All this defect considered subtype of the atrial septal defect. Great. So, uh, Dr. Azza, we will dive into more tips related to diagnosis of atrial defects. So, uh, how do you identify these defects and what are the most uh, common uh, clinical clues for these uh, defects? Uh, till now, the echocardiography considers the gold stone in diagnosis of congenital heart disease as a whole, not only the atrial septal defect and the atrial septal defect per se, because uh, clinical uh, feature of atrial septal defect not to uh, horrible like other defects of cyanotic heart disease. So it may be uh, concealed until it is uh, have a, a significant uh, clinical feature. Uh, at first, uh, in Egypt per se, we have a screening of neonates with uh, critical condition and we have pulse oximetry test in uh, our neonatal unit. But this is not the universal in all hospitals. Uh, if you wanted to diagnose uh, atrial septal defect, it's high suspicion. You have to uh, have a great suspicion. Uh, you have a good clinical skills because it will be referred from GP doctor if it is missed in your neonatal diagnosis. Uh, atrial septal defect without echo, it's difficult to diagnose if it is not manifest. Uh, and manifestation here uh, related to a congestive heart uh, failure uh, manifestation because uh, it takes a long standing time to have a, a manifestation. Uh, especially, it may not manifest until the third or fourth decade. So, we have not to wait until it is manifest. We have uh, to find it as early as possible to be diagnosed with the screening in the neonatal period, especially with high-risk group. 
Okay, great. So, Dr. Azda, in the section we will dive into management of this condition. So, uh, when uh, is medical management is appropriate and when uh, surgical and interventional closure is indicated? See, we have to differentiate the uh, injured septal defect as a small defect and large defect. When we uh, tell about gas closure, we have uh, to uh, think of a uh, small defect with a big trim. And this uh, uh, this is uh, have a criteria of gas closure and the criteria of surgical closure. Uh, but if you know, Diana, 50% of this atrial septal defect has a spontaneous closure with early life. So no intervention may be needed at all, especially if uh, secondum atrial septal defect. 50% uh, close with itself or with follow up, especially defects less than one centimeter. Uh, we have an hope to uh, follow up to close. Uh, we decide to close the defect if have no complication within three to four years of uh, child age. So through this period of time, if discovered since neonatal period, you have three years chance to take it close continuously. Uh, especially if there is no manifestation uh, suggesting the early closure is a must, like failure to thrive or uh, congestive heart failure, or there is indication to close uh, surgically uh, mm. due to associated congenital heart anomaly. This uh, condition of uh, septum secundum. Uh, when to close, uh, as I said to you, uh, we close it typically preschool. Because this is the age of the child will have less manifestation, this complication, and it will uh, be happy in a school life, no limitation of lifestyle, like his uh, colleagues. Uh, and there is uh, also uh, an atrial uh, septal defect, secondum type. Uh, if we consider the closure uh, by uh, by case closure, we have to have criteria. Uh, it must be bloated uh, uh, for age of the child, weight of the child, and its relation to the device uh, size. Because uh, it must be no more than 1.5 uh, uh, of the device size, because too much device uh, size. Uh, or too less baby uh, child age, or too much, uh, uh, too much uh, defect size, it may be not adequate for test closure, and we have to shift it to surgical option. Although surgical option uh, not usually done in children, because most even uh, uh, conditions where uh, we can overcome obstacles by using new techniques and new de the new device uh, uh, now. So, Dr. Aza, what are the key aspects of uh, post-intervention care, and uh, what uh, and what is the complications that we should be monitored for? You see, this is device considered a foreign body in a child uh, heart. So the at least the child must take uh, antiplatelets for six months and uh, we have a bacterial endocarditis prophylaxis for uh, six months. Uh, then this uh, child, as you know, Diana, is foreign body, is liable to dislodgement, is liable to erosion of surrounding structure, liable to malfunction of the adjacent valves, AV valves, uh, occlusion of surrounding structure, to be skipped in the bloodstream. Uh, it's liable to allergy to nickel, especially with some uh, device as a bladder, a uh, simple occluder. Uh, also, we have uh, a relation uh, to post operative complications like pericardial effusion and cardiac tamponading, infection, like any gas closure. Uh, also, uh, post-operative complication, if we have an operation, it's costly, as you know, long hospital stay, uh, you have this sternotomy and thoracotomy operation, which is disfigurement and uh, uh, related to social issue and related to psychological issue in the child, related to a long hospital stay and budget and burden of the health care provider. Okay. As you know, like yes, actually, but uh, there are some clinical uh, complications for this. 
Uh, for cast closure, it's usually successful by 95%, even in Egypt, we have a high success rate. And we have a large group of uh, trained doctors uh, to do cast closure by, by its own modification. And uh, our result is very good, even in healthy care hospitals not only institutional hospital or govern uh, or uh, uh, university hospital we have a good success rate uh, no uh, 95 percent success rate with no complications this complication uh, that i said is too much less and uh, not horrible an atrial septal defect we have too much success rate and we have too much studies to document our success rate in egypt and um, we are like uh, uh, USD. Great, great. That's uh, we are dream for a lot. And currently, uh, I want to ask about maybe uh, uh, HCP. Uh, how can a healthcare professional uh, identify uh, risk stages and uh, how can implement preventive strategies? Uh, preventive strategy, as you know, Diana, we have to, in every uh, disease, we have to know uh, the, uh, the, uh, the family history, uh, especially ASD, there is familial type and inherited type of ASD. And this familial type and the inherited type is too much dangerous because it, uh, it has an uh, autosomal dominant uh, inheritance. Uh, especially uh, from maternal side and if you know uh, uh, if you have a family with too much ESD in this family we have to uh, searching about the genetic cause uh, in this proband and his family member because uh, as you know uh, there is uh, uh, there is uh, a conditions uh, uh, with inherited ASD and with tachy and bradyarrhythmia, and this condition may lead to sudden cardiac death. Uh, and as you know, Diana, we uh, the development of the heart usually in uh, the four, first four weeks of pregnancy, and the development of ASD especially it is a thick uh, three category, and it is formed from uh, three uh, major elements. As an embryological background, you know, this formed from the uh, atrial septal, uh, primary atrial septal defect, and formed from the EV, uh, EV canal septal, uh, septal defect, EV canal port from endocardial cushion, and from the dorsal mesenchymal cap, uh, that is uh, related to the second uh, heart uh, field. And this is mesenchymal cap and AV caution and primary atrial septal defect. It is related to what to call the transcriptional factor. And this is transcriptional factor is inherited uh, condition and it is related to what we know familial ASD. Because this is transcriptional factor. If we have this uh, 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 inheritance, uh, this uh, in uh, this uh, malformation of this transcriptional factor, atrial septal defect will be affected and they affect also uh, the uh, SA node and the AV node and this patient will be uh, developed ready arrhythmia or take arrhythmia in association with atrial septal defect. So atrial septal defect in spite you hear it is a simple disease but familial type not be totally simple must be taken in serious and we must screen all the family member we have to screen about SA node disease we have to screen about the AV node disease because this family are prone to sudden cardiac death babies. Also, uh, there is chromosomal problem associated with atrial septal defect and uh, conditions, deletion, microdeletion, and duplication of the chromosome. Uh, and you have uh, too much atrial septal defects in chromosomal anomalies uh, like uh, Nonon, like um, Down syndrome. Uh, right treasure columns. This is condition we have to be screened about atrial septal defect and any family with this uh, malformations and this chromosomal problem we have to be screened or a subsequent family member about that. This is for the prevention. Prevention also related to the early diagnosis and you know as I said before there is a screening of the critically ill unit 
uh, and uh, there is also pass oximetry screening to know the atrial septal defect. But simple atrial septal defect not do any manifestation in unit dynamic. Usually the complicated atrial septal defect or the atrial septal defect with other congenital anomalies. As you know, we have two types of atrial septal defect, as you said before, simple atrial septal defect and the atrial septal defect with associated with congenital heart disease, uh, which is a life-saving in this condition, like atrial septal defect associated with outflow obstruction, uh, uh, pulmonary outflow obstruction or aortic outflow obstruction, atrial septal defect with complex congenital heart, like uh, TGA, Atrial septal defect with AV valve obstruction like tricuspid atresia and pulmonary atresia. All this condition must be accompanied by uh, AST as life saving or at least the PF4. This condition presenting early in early neonatal life. But ASD secundum, as an uh, example, which is the most common type, it will be missed if you have no clinical suspicion. So you tell me how the uh, house officer know. You you have a child come with repeated chest infection. You have to examine this child wisely. Uh, if you have uh, uh, in uh, in two year old usually or three year old or five year old, if this happen missed, you know an atrial septal defect is a defect between two atria. So the blood is shifted from the high pressure side to the low pressure side. And the shunting here appear due to uh, a different uncompliance from the left side heart to the right side heart. Uh, there is shunting from left to right and there is dilatation of the right side of the heart and increased flow in the right side of the heart leading to increased flow to the pulmonary circulation. And this increased flow to the pulmonary circulation will lead to increase uh, total pulmonary uh, blood flow in the above the systemic pulmonary blood flow. This increased pulmonary blood flow leading to, leading to atrial dilatation in the right side, right ventricular dilatation, leading to pulmonary congestive side. This is in the early stage to the moderate stage. How we know this child is diseased? We have too much pulmonary blood flow, so this child becomes with repeated chest infection. Sometimes patient said this is bronchiolitis doctor, this is uh, asthma doctor, uh, what? but this is concealed. Sometimes you hear due to increased pulmonary blood flow by stethoscope, you hear a systolic murmur in the second, uh, in the pulmonary area, in the second interposition space. Sometimes uh, you have uh, white fixed this blood because too much pulmonary flow will delay the closure of the pulmonary valve so uh, there is a space between the uh, aortic closure and pulmonary closure we have white fixed split uh, in the second heart sound with the progression of the condition you have right ventricular dilatation and increased tricuspid uh, flow of the blood you will hear uh, mid diastolic murmur on the tricuspid area in the lower sternum after the progression of the disease more and more, and you have right ventricular hypertrophy, you will have heave in the parasternal area due to right heart dilatation. With increased condition and uh, in certain four decade or even in malignant ASCD condition, you will acquire uh, pulmonary hypertension. This is for atrial secundum and for other uh, ASDs. Other ASDs, Diana, all one has a special feature, as you know. If we have PFO, it is usually not uh, not symptomatic at all, except in four decades or third decades, with peripheral uh, uh, diseases called the coagulation problem. We may have a stroke, so they they do now what is called the brain and heart units for this condition, because any patient come with a stroke and it is. Uh, 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 unidentified cause and we have peripheral blood clotting the problem we have to examine heart too for this O and there is center enough for heart and brain disease this is B, uh, regarding BFO regarding is DC condom we tell about the uh, details regarding uh, uh, sinus venosus ESD this condition 
usually associated with partial anomaly pulmonary venous drainage. And this comes early with congestive heart failure because, you know, pulmonary venous drainage will be drained in the right side of the heart and more and more increase in the pulmonary blood flow and more and more congestive symptoms. And it, it will not be late diagnosed, it may be early diagnosis. Uh, regarding coronary sinus ASD, also this patient come early with cyanosis because this patient um, have a mixing uh, shunt between right and left side and this patient may be associated with other congenital heart disease which is serious like left SVC, uh, left uh, superior vena cava and like uh, isoparism and like uh, anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. Uh, also, Brian ASD, it will associate with common AV canal and you know even for a common AV canal, uh, it is uh, the core of the heart is already absent and in this condition it will be serious and discovered here. So every every type has a, its own scenario uh, and if we concentrate in the atrial secundum type, it will uh, be our rule in children because it is a misleading part and it the type will be closed by uh, by uh, device, you know, and the type will be treated completely without any side effect or drawbacks, little side effect or drawbacks. Uh, it's uh, too much long uh, uh, etiology, but we have a way to treat or prevent. We have to know from where we prevent. Understand? Yes, yeah. yes, it is, yeah. of course, because you know, uh, yeah. we have to know, Diana, we have to extend this part in prevention. Yes. Uh, but it's associated the uh, maternal factor linked to uh, congenital heart disease, especially ASDs in most study. They tell obesity, uh, diabetes, yes. and cigarette smoking, uh, 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 organic solvent usage, uh, and uh, maternal infection, especially rubella, and uh, all this uh, can contribute to yes. uh, atrial septal defect formation. And so, for prevention, we have to be directed here. Yes, uh, I think uh, we cover here, or you need more extension. <laughs> okay, it's it's covered, of course. But uh, in the section, I want to ask about uh, pulmonary vascular disease in patients who's already had atrial defects? Uh, as we discuss uh, for pulmonary vascular disease, uh, and uh, we can discuss with atrial septal defect, the atrial secundum defect first, yes. because in atrial secundum it is a, a, a single defect uh, only. Uh, pulmonary vascular disease in a childhood period rarely happen, especially uh, except with large defects really happen except with large defect but in adulthood it uh, it must be screened uh, uh, because it can be happen or it can be the presenting sign especially if you have a female uh, coming uh, with uh, difficulty pregnancy and uh, this female uh, uh, you her doctor uh, 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 she is manifest by heart failure and this female uh, her uh, obstetrician, I uh, send her to the cardiologist and he, he, he discovers this patient have an atrial septal defect or uh, which is secundum or primum. So why is this female not discovered all this? As I told you, Diana, this will take a long time to be a manifest. And this, uh, there is murmur, usually faint murmur, usually soft murmur. This patient in her all time, not examined well by the stethoscope. No one heard her heart. No one see what happened. This one may manifest by syncopal attack. This uh, patient may manifest uh, later on by arrhythmias uh, and uh, managed by heart failure, uh, diagnosed as heart failure patient. And when you go back to the pediatrician uh, or to the echocardiographer doctor, you will uh, see this is uh, atrial septal defect neglected. So pulmonary vascular disease, as I tell you, it takes a long time to be done because it related to modeling of the capillary bed. And this remodeling happened over, uh, over years. Sometimes in children, we close the defect by device or by surgery. And already the stage of pulmonary hypertension starts. 
and the complete even after closure of the valve. So before closure of the uh, of the uh, closure of the uh, defect, we have to know this patient already go on pulmonary hypertension stage or not. And in usually in children we don't examine the patient for pulmonary hypertension. Uh, but in uh, in other what we have to do. There is also manifestation of pulmonary hypertension. We have to take care. And this uh, patient uh, with atrial septal defect, do you know this non-cyanotic congenital heart? If you know there is decreased saturation, it is one sign of uh, of, uh, of pulmonary hypertension. If you see there is uh, some some signs that appear in echocardiography, which manifests there is pulmonary hypertension here. Uh, there is increase in tricuspid regurgitate. There is a flattering of inter, uh, interventricular septum. There is um, increase in mean pulmonary artery pressure. And in this condition, uh, in ECHO, we have to jump to the next step in diagnosis, which is a CAS lab. And this patient must be to CAS lab to measure uh, the pulmonary artery pressure uh, accurately, to measure the pulmonary capillary which pressure accurately. And if there is increase in the pulmonary uh, hypertension, uh, sometimes it not means that in the stage we have to uh, see the reactivity of this uh, pulmonary vascular bed to oxygen or nitric oxide. If this reactivity okay, this means this patient remodeling can be reversible. And this uh, patient, we can close the defect peacefully. Uh, 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 and we can give aggressive diuretics uh, to remodel the ventricle and remodel the pulmonary vascular bed. We even, if there, this remodeling is not okay or this aggressive therapy of diuretics not okay, sometimes we give a special form of devices to partially close the defect gradually until remodeling of the right and left side pressure and total closure of the defect is fine. Great. So, uh, Dr. Azda, every single day we got updates about uh, any medical conditions. So, uh, what advancement do you foresee in diagnosis and management of atrial defects? Uh, as you know, Diana, first I said to you, we have to, in uh, genetic study is important in diagnosis of atrial septal defect, uh, especially in early stage of life. Because in early stage of uh, of pregnancy, decision of abortion or decision of early follow up uh, could be uh, uh, could be uh, benefit of benefit. Uh, prevention of maternal diseases and maternal risk factor it is a must now. Screening of women with uh, with uh, especially old age, diabetic and women with uh, chronic diseases and families with condition that may indicate subsequent pregnancy with congenital uh, heart disease. Uh, in terms of fertilization babies also, we can do it in early stage of, uh, uh, of development. Uh, we can uh, do a chorionic well sampling early in the week of pregnancy. We can do a neotic flow sampling in, uh, in 16 weeks of pregnancy. Uh, we can do uh, echocardiography of the child in utero uh, to know uh, what is the congenital heart defect and make the decision about uh, later on uh, postnatal. Uh, as you know, we have a screening test, partial ozometric test in full unit. A critically ill child must be examined by ECHO and must be screened well. And subsequent unital period, you, any child with any cardiac problem or any chest problem must be examined with cardiologist. We have an, uh, a team of pass closure in uh, in our hospital and in large hospital to be referred and uh, there is a good skeleton about that uh, and follow up also of these uh, babies or these children after uh, intervention whatever the intervention is surgical or pest closure or even the condition was complicated by the condition. Great. 
Uh, so, Dr. Azza, finally, I want to ask about uh, genetic factor, genetic taste. Uh, what, ca how can this taste uh, contribute in managing and assess uh, atrial defects in these patients? So, uh, I know you mentioned a lot about genetic factors. So, if you need to uh, to add any tips, go ahead. Uh, as I said, Diana, there is a test, chromosomal test, uh, to assess uh, uh, chromosomal uh, si uh, chromosomal uh, number. Uh, deletion and micro deletion and uh, abnormal uh, chromosome structure. So we can do karyotyping, we can do fish study, uh, we can do uh, uh, that for transcriptional factor responsible for interceptor defect formation. As I said before, uh, there we have uh, three uh, transcriptional factor important for interceptor formation, especially in the medium type. We have to search about there is cat and the T box group, especially a T box five. And any K uh, X two to five, these three transcriptional factors are too much important factor in development of atrial septal defect, and we have to search about this uh, uh, also. Agree. Uh, and also, uh, uh, you know, the sequencing of the genome make us more uh, more oriented uh, with the genetic factor responsible about congenital heart disease as a whole. And with more and more sequence, we will have more and more information for prevention and the treatment of this uh, condition. Great. So, Dr. Adza, do you need to add any tips or some tricks uh, and takeaways as well for uh, healthcare professionals to uh, in managing and di diagnosis uh, atrial defects? Yes, uh, I wanted to tell a general professional as atrial septal defect uh, when it is of secondal type, it's a simple disease, and we can uh, take our time till the child will be in adequate age and adequate health and adequate weight to be closed. We usually close this defect by five year age. We are not in hurry to close the disease that uh, to close the, the defect as early as possible. Usually, general care practitioner, once we write atrial septal defects, they are worried, doctor, what the time to close its defect? We have to be patient because a small defect, 50% will close spontaneously. So we will uh, avoid uh, intervention. Any device less than half centimeter, we are not in hurry to close. It's need for up even for a long period even uh, uh, to adulthood and in spite of there is no pulmonary hypertension manifestation or there is no failure to thrive nothing it's uh, take it easy and be wise and if you need close follow up with your cardiologist also when we decide to close the the, the device uh the defect with device we have to know there is measurement we have to take care about this measurement we have to uh, to know uh, as a cardiologist our role in diagnosis uh, and to know uh, what's suitable for device closure and what's suitable for surgical closure and what's the difference between both and what's the drawback of device closure and the drawbacks of surgical closure. What is the social uh, level of the child? What is the mentality of the family? Uh, what is the mentality of the caregiver? This all must be regarded during the, our uh, our journey with the child. Also, we want to tell our care professional, and this is case closure of the ATL septal defect after six months will be safe, in spite of rare complication, as we said before, like erosion. And this erosion, uh, too much less with the new techniques, uh, our colleagues in case lab do now, and with the new uh, devices. Uh, any child with atrial septal defect occlusion, whatever surgery or whatever uh, device, must be followed up for long life. It's not a, 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 a one step and go home. I see sometimes a child go home for six years, no follow up. Why? Every year follow up once is important. It will save you from any complication. It will give you uh, an uh, idea about what happened inside. Also, I wanted Diana to tell you about uh, arrhythmias in atrial septum. We don't discuss arrhythmias. 
atrial septal defect, uh, you know, there is dilatation of the right atrium and right atrium. This is one uh, will have the SE node and there is the AV node also uh, just uh, near to it. So any dilatation in the, atria, in the right atrium will affect the automaticity of the heart and will affect the, uh, the rhythm of the heart. And so this rhythm will be affected by different way. Even uh, uh, risk affection will be happen after treatment uh, of the defect. And once a risk may happen, uh, even closure of the defect it will not repent. And any type of malignant arrhythmia, we have to uh, refer uh, rapidly to the cardiologist to take action before closure and after. Great. So, Dr. Azda, I'm really I can't uh, describe how much I'm really thankful for you uh, for sharing your experience with us and the uh, very valuable insight as we used. So, thank you so much, Dr. Azda, and hopefully to uh, continue our uh, our series with very critical topics related to pediatrician and cardiology as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Azda. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Thanks to meet again, Sean. Of course. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Bye bye.